Sisterhood of the Woman. My name is Elizabeth Abai, and don't get it twisted, the program is still the woman, but my location slightly move a little bit. I'm precisely in Abia State, in a home of a woman who I want to describe as uh, the totality of what womanhood is all about. She's not just enterprising, industrious, she is a mother, a deaconess, a poor Harry fellow. I'll skip the rest of it, but join me as I take my walk inside and get to usher in my guest for today. Come along. I don't think in gender boxes at all. I just get on with it. A man that would dare to ask the wife, who do you think you are? Dad is a real man. In fact, our husbands are our firstborns. The husband needs more attention than even the children. It's not only about work. It's not only about family. They need to take the time to look after themselves. And we don't. We don't do that. They took my money. I paid every fees. I never asked to be hoisted as a governor. I wanted to be allowed to go out there and contest for the position of uh, uh, governorship candidate first. There's nothing greater than looking back and seeing that while you were aspiring, you were able to inspire others. Empower to women. Yes. We need to us. have more women, more multitaskers around Nigeria to get Nigeria working. Definitely. But it is the lodge, the house, the home of the first lady in Abia State, the mother of a state. Join me as I graciously and happily and quite humbly welcome the first lady of Abia State in the person of Mrs. Nkechi Ikazo, wife of a governor of Abia State and of course the founder of one great foundation that has helped a lot of people within this state and environment. Uh, thank you for having me in your house. I was going to say thank you for coming to my studio, but for the next 25 minutes, this is my studio, so I'll still say thank you for coming on the show. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We all knew you know, long ago before you became the first lady. And um, uh, for me, remembering who you were and who you are now, not, not much has actually changed. But let me throw you back to 2015. Or even a little beyond, uh, be, uh, beyond that, when the campaign was going on, when your husband, you know, decided to run, knowing you're a very quiet, unassuming, but very active person, how did you take it? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to my home. Thank you. Yeah. That was. Uh, I, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. Um, but there's nothing I could have done that, uh, other than that to uh, support him and pray for him so that he can succeed. Somebody kickstarted this journey for me. A lady who called to ask me to particularly thank you for what you did for our family with your foundation, the Vika Hope Foundation. You know, that's a foundation that saves uh, a lot of people with uh, the sickle cell sickness. Tell us how did the, how did this come about? What led to breath of uh, this charity act in you? Mm -hmm. Actually, I had a very, very close relation that is a secular. So watching him grow, I, it touched me. And when I came into this position, I decided to do something to help our people. Uh, as well as uh, the Peter Hope Foundation. We have a condition. We have had um, two. We have two um, offices. One in Aba, one in Omaha. Just a clinic for the patients. And the more, the more thing, because it doesn't have a cure. But what we do is we are trying what we can do to break the circle. That is by enlightening people, making them aware of their genotypes. They know that before they get married. Hmm. What else do, does the clinic do for people? You know, beyond just uh, the, the education, do they provide any kind of support? Yeah, we, we 
go to the equipment, we, we ask them to come and test for their genital. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then we, from time to time, we have a counseling session. We come with the guidance so that we talk to them because um, a sickle cell person, the next person to him or her is very important to help, especially the younger ones. Mm -hmm. So we bring a spouse to speak to them about the and how to manage it. You know, a lot of times people are said to be told to do something and they don't get to eventually get to do it and do it well. Are people actually responding to the counseling you give? Or are they still thinking that love comes first, not genotype? That's what we have been telling them, that the genotype comes first then before love. We have been telling our people like that because we go to the rural areas to talk to. You know, it's very camp and the, the, most of them are very ignorant. They don't know mm -hmm. uh, what, what that is. So we try as much as possible to go and speak to them. And um, I think some people, and they come on their own to come and test. Uh, even though we have not achieved actually what we wanted to do, we only have um, two, uh, one, one clinic in our clinic in Mayanji. We have 17 local government areas, so we are trying to see how we can get the services closer to the people in the rural areas, so that more people will get be aware of how to do it and what to do. Yeah, I want to know what gave birth to it. Is it because your mother-in-law is a medical person? No, no. I'm surrounded by medical people. Even my mother was mm. a nurse. Okay. I'm surrounded by. But when you get to the villages. This is the problem. They have a lot of health problems. And uh, I just discovered that uh, women, we don't even, we don't just go for checkup, just medical checkup like uh, advanced countries. Unless when we are sick and very, very sick, then we go, start going to hospital. So that's why we are doing cancer awareness. In fact, we have just, the government have just helped us to acquire the mammogram. It's in my... Uh, clinic at the sickle cell center. So just to help the women, when you, at times when we have programs, we start with health, we check their BP, we check their, the, those that we have diabetes. So when you see there's plenty of them, so we now started to see, see, this is the problem of our people, especially for women in the rural areas. So that's why we started the awareness on the health diabetes, cancer, and so on. Now, another major concern of yours is the plight of the widows. And a lot has been mentioned around that domain, with what you're doing for them. You want to share that with us? Okay. As for, uh, one of the things I do in Vita Hope is about uh, building a building for the widows. Actually, right now we are talking about the nine. There are other ones they are still on in the process of doing that. When we um, identify the widows, if you go to the villages, we will go there. Or if anybody reports, we go and see. And actually, when you see it, you know that they actually need the roof over their heads. That's what I was going to ask because we are very good actors. We can act <laughs> no, just no, to collect. No, we, go we go to the villages and there. Uh, we, we see it. You, you just see the children, you see the, the, the parents, you see their houses. Some of them will just use the, the uh, banners or something and to cover up their, their houses. If we will get money, we will go there to build for them. Uh, we have had a lot of assistance from the governor and some individuals uh, in the state. They have been actually helpful. When we do for them, if they don't have anything to do, we can empower them to start uh, trading or whatever they want to do, if they want to learn skills. Actually, in Vita of Two, we do skill acquisition and we do it local government by local government. We take 50 from each local government and we do two local governments at a time. That means we, we in three months we will, um, train about 100 people. And to local government. At the end of the training, we give them something to start up. Yeah. And then um, also, 
there are some women in the village they, they are not they can't go to start learning now but they they, want, they can sell they can do go to the local markets so we also go there we give them little things to start up in trading that's what we do and then um, the government also helped us to build markets local markets in the villages so when we saw so one as I was passing okay, and it was so really full mm. <laughs> when we go there we just select some of those very very indigent people then we give them something at times we buy the material and give them we don't give them money mm. so, so that they just go there and start uh, trading because given the money they could just use it, it and uh, be why if you give them produce they begin mm -hmm. to do it now the skill acquisition center for uh, the Vika Hope is it only for widows or is it open to no, the, the the skill acquisition we, we are moving it with we, we are we don't have a, a stationary okay. um, center okay and uh, we go from local when we get to the local government we do we is that one is missed up Okay. We have um, the women, we have men, we have youths. Oh, okay. Yes. Mm. But the, the one for the markets, the the, the table, uh, threads that you have, that one, we, we give it to the women in the rural areas. Of course, it said that um, if you're able to train a woman, you know, you train a nation. If you're able to feed a woman, you feed the entire family. The men, mm. I'm not saying, please don't hold it against me. I'm not saying men are not good. <laughs> But a lot of times, the mother will not eat until her children have actually eaten. Yes. Now, I'm going back to your personal life. Mm. The life of, um, you have two lives now. The life of the Deacon Mrs. Nkechi Ikwazo, it's a different one. And the life of the First Lady. It, I know it comes with a lot of responsibilities. How do you cope with it? And um, how do you begin not to lose yourself? you know, with one against the other. It's just, um, we are holding tight to God. I pray that uh, He will help me to do the two. Uh, the, the, from the home, uh, I, I have to take care of my children, I have to take care of my husband, I have to make the home comfortable for him when he comes back from the, the, the tedious um, work he's doing. We go on like that. We do domestic work. You still find time to go to the kitchen. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> and for the office, immediately you come in, you know that it has a, a date. It's, it's a, you know that it, 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 you have a date. To leave. It's just yes. uh, some time, then you leave, and another person will come. So there's, uh, you try to be yourself. Because after the tenor, you you will go back to where you are coming from. All right, uh, it's beautiful to know because a lot of times we lose sight of who we are because um, at the end of the day we we didn't really compromise the fact that every position except the position of life, even life itself has expiration dates. Now you have worked uh, with women closely, yeah. especially the indigent women. Coming here, I try to sample opinion. Some people actually said that um, the men are the reasons why the women are not progressing well. I don't know what your take is on that. What is that that is stopping our women from coming out and uh, you know feigning for themselves, supporting their families properly? Well, I think the first one is the culture. Culture. Okay. The culture. So they believe that um, the women are own is just inside the kitchen or in the house, but it's not so because we have seen a lot of um, women who are who are doing it, um, doing it outside and there. Uh, so the anyway, uh, 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 let me if it's about um, politics. If, if you are talking from the angle of politics, there are so many factors that uh, face the women there. So, and at times some women will, will not um, even uh, support their fellow women. Really? Yes. As a pull her down syndrome. Yes. Mm -hmm. support it. But 
Remember the last time we were doing um, uh, the local government election? You know, some women, they will come, you see, we will be calling them, just go out, take the phone from uh, the chairman. And some women will say, no, don't go. Uh, be the deputy, you know, that type of thing. But we continue to enlighten them, to talk to them that they can also do it. And uh, the ones we had, they did very well. Uh, they, they performed well. But it's not this, you are, the, the physical strength that you are going to use to do it. It's, it's the intellect, the intellect the and the emotion yes. that you are going to use to uh, perform the, the task. All it's right. Um, I know that you are sports inclined. As a matter of fact, you have uh, been able to do a whole lot in the area of uh, sports. You actually have received... Uh, award as a patron of a certain <laughs> uh, sports uh, group mm -hmm. and I know that you sponsor the Nkechi Ipwazo Annual National Open Para Badminton Champions. That's uh, quite uh, commendable. Were you a sports girl in secondary school? Yes. Really? Yes. Wow. Did you I'm a fast runner. Fast runner? Yes. <laughs> I would like to roll back a little bit and see what it was like. <laughs> I do high jump and I do the 100 meters as well with secondary school. Mm. Yes. I see the gym house. Are you still using it? Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, how do you relax generally? Uh, I do gym when I sit back in my house with little to music. I can sew. That's uh, good. I sew. I'm a good teller. You can try me. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, those of you who are watching right now, <laughs> Christmas is around the corner yes. and I'm going to get my beautiful clothes <laughs> and send it to the first lady of the area state. She has to do me a costume that I wear on Christmas Day. And when I wear it, I'm going to stand and tell you this is it. <laughs> All right. It's so lovely knowing that being who you are, it didn't take away the woman in you because no matter what we are, we're made to uh, be the help and when I tell people that help is not just like uh, pushing somebody around, somebody who is your help is actually your strength. Mm -hmm. So, which is why we may be called the weaker sex, but we remain the strength yes. of the mm -hmm. men. As a parting word, I'd want to have you share your advice to women who are apparently watching you now, especially the women of Abia State who are your children at the moment. Okay. I always tell the women that nobody should stay idle. Learn a trade. Even if you are a civil servant or you're a doctor, learn a trade that you can be using in your home. It will help. My mother in law was a nurse, but my husband told me that she's the one that made her this sweater that she used to um, when he was little. That's like a coat of many colors. <laughs> So I'm advising them to, to, to come out. Let them come out, let, let them hear us. At least let us, let us complain of those things they don't allow us to do. So let's start from somewhere. So I'm encouraging them to come out, even if it's in politics, in their homes, let us come out and stand as women. At least let us support one another in whatever we are going to do. All right, that's a good one. How would you want to be remembered? But I want to be remembered by the service I've rendered to the people in this my position. If you see the, the joy, the happiness on the faces of those women you build houses for, you will be fulfilled. So that's what I want to be remembered for, for the services I've rendered to the very poor, indigent people in our state. That's lovely. That's lovely. And I pray that God continue to, you know, give you the grace to do more. And uh, even when you're done with your tenure, you're not going to cease because the cash will continue to flow Amen. for you to do more for people. Amen. And um, uh, on a very naughty note, I want to know what I'll do to annoy you. Because I've never seen you angry. Where do I put it? You know, when you're working with women, there are a lot of, um, lot of things. Some people will come to make you to hate the other. You know, I, I, would I call it gossip? I hate it. Okay, yes, like I hate it. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much, Mommy Abia and uh, Mrs. 
Nkechi Ikwazo. You've been an inspiration to a lot of people in your very quiet, you know, selfless way of doing things. You've touched lives, and we beg God to continue to touch your own life positively. Thank you. Thank you. All right. It has been a wonderful show coming all the way to Abia State, incidentally, my own state, to speak with our mother here. I, I find that quite a privilege, and um, I've also learned a whole lot. It is not by how much you talk, but how much you do. So let's continue to impact on people around us. She started even before she became the wife of a governor or became the first lady. So we can always start somewhere. Nothing is too small to reach out to your neighbor. Don't forget, the program is The Woman, where we showcase women of substance. I'll be with you again next week. <laughs>